Hello, my name is Kristen Snyder, and I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to be here today to discuss the treatment of CCLA with medical therapeutics. I will discuss ovulable use of trametinib today, and I also was a consultant to Novartis, where I sat on a panel to educate Novartis employees on PIC3 CA-related overgrowth syndromes. This diagram clearly depicts movement of lymph from the capillary bed intestines, liver, and ultimately into the venous system. Obstruction of this pathway anywhere along its route, dysmotility of the lymphatic vessels, absence or dysfunction of the lymphatic valves or thoracic duct can contribute to a backflow of lymphatic fluid. This results in chylus effusions, pleural pericardial or ascites, lymphedema of the legs, labia, scrotum, dermal backflow with weeping of the skin. We are now able to identify genetic changes associated with some CCLA conditions. We also have the ability to identify the genetic causes of many conditions, which also have elements of CCLA. Serolimus may be useful for disorders caused by an activating mutation in PIK3CA or AKT, and trametinib may be useful in treating conditions caused by an activating mutation in the RAS pathway. This diagram shows the pathways involved in vascular anomalies. The left side of the diagram depicts the RAS, RAF, MAC, ERK pathway. Mutations in this pathway can result in a variety of vascular anomalies which are listed around the circumference of the circle. However, for this particular presentation, I'm going to focus on medical treatments that we have used for our patients with CCLA only, and we'll use three cases to best illustrate the outcomes of this therapy. Trametinib is a reversible inhibitor of the activation and kinase activity of the mitogen-activated extracellular signal-regulated kinases 1 and 2, or MEK1-2. Its approved indications include BRAF mutated melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, and anaplastic thyroid cancers. But it's currently being studied in pediatric brain tumors, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia, and infants with cardiomyopathy associated with RAS pathway mutations. Broadly speaking, patients with vascular anomalies and causative mutations were referred for treatment to our Vascular Anomalies Oncology Division based on diminished performance status, failure of conventional therapy, such as failure of octreotide or serolimus, failure of a low-fat diet, and no alternatives for surgical or interventional procedures and for their poor quality of life due to frequency of albumin or blood transfusions or necessity for hospitalization and long-term chest tube placement. Patients with comorbidities and organ compromise, including renal failure, did not get to initiate treatment until these findings improved. Patients who met these conditions were then assessed for treatment with trametinib. Adult dosing of trametinib in neoplastic disease is two milligrams, and that used in pediatric patients for neoplastic disease is 0.032 milligrams per kilo in patients less than six years of age. We have used a decreased dose level, both because our condition is non-neoplastic and may also be associated with germline mutations. Our pediatric patients were administered doses of 0.025 milligrams per kilo per day at a two milligram maximum although many patients have ultimately been treated at only 0.5 or one milligram per day dosing. Our first case is that of a 12-year-old patient with an ARAF mutation and a complex lymphatic anomaly with poor response to conventional therapies. On exam, he has severe lymphedema a large pericardial effusion, poor respiratory function, and severely diminished quality of life. His MRL pretreatment demonstrated a dilated, torturous lymphatic vasculature, and he was treated with trametinib. Post-treatment, MRL findings demonstrated decreased size of his inguinal channels and overall um, restructuring of his lymphatic system. After only two months of treatment, this patient had improved pulmonary function decreased need for supplemental oxygen, and reduced lymphatic fluid retention. 
After 12 months of treatment with trametinib, his total lung capacity improved from 29 to 56% of the predicted value. Our second case involves a patient with Noonan syndrome and a SOS1 mutation. At five years of age, she developed a chylothorax associated with persistent poor growth and fatigue. At 14 years of age, she developed pallor, abdominal pain, and melena. Her hemoglobin at that time was 5.7 and her albumin less than three. Capsule endoscopy demonstrated mesenteric and retroperitoneal lymphangiectasia and a friable bleeding mucosa. Her imaging demonstrated abnormal central lymphatics and retrograde mesenteric flow with extensive perfusion to the left chest and lung. She was treated with octreotide, a low fat diet, oral budesonide and albumin infusions and lymphatic embolization with glue. Ultimately, this only benefited her for two months. She had additional procedures and an intraduodenal cauterization of vascular ectasia with a three-month benefit. She was treated on trametinib and had resolution of her symptoms, as well as improvement of her MRL. She also had improvements in her hemoglobin, albumin, and duodenal lymphangiectasia, as seen in the graphs and photos included here. Our third case is that of a 14-year-old female with the diagnosis of ectodermal dysplasia ocular malformation syndrome caused by a KRAS mutation. At age nine, she developed a chylus effusion and protein-losing enteropathy. She was treated with serolimus in a low-fat diet for four years and initiated trametinib initially at one milligram daily, but due to toxicities was reduced to 0.5 milligrams daily. Her growth curve following initiation of trametinib has improved overall and taking into account windowing after five months of consistent treatment, this patient's MRL is stable overall. Each of these patients also, and unfortunately, develop toxicities of trametinib. Common toxicities that we've seen in our patient population include diarrhea, for which we decrease or hold the dose if greater than grade three, acneform eruptions, where we involve dermatology, perinicchia and fissuring of the skin, and laboratory abnormalities. We've also seen rare toxicities, such as colitis with perforation and pneumatosis. We've seen increased creatinine phosphokinase levels into the thousands, and we've seen significant paniculitis. Rare and not seen, but monitored for side effects also include left ventricular dysfunction and arrhythmias and retinopathy and retinal vein occlusion. Management for these toxicities is usually toxicity-based, oftentimes withholding and reducing the doses of trametinib. In summary, vascular anomalies, including CCLA, are associated with germline and somatic mutations. These mutations cause aberrant growth and differentiation of the RAS pathway, leading to various clinical phenotypes. These mutations can be targeted with therapies that are currently available. Neoplastic dosing levels may not be necessary. In the future, reporting further, we would plan to be reporting further on our series of patients treated similarly. And again, dosing levels need to be established in this population of patients. I'd like to thank you for your attention today. And I'd like to thank my colleagues in the Comprehensive Vascular Anomalies Program at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia my longtime mentor, Dr. Denise Adams, as well as our patients and their families for whom we fight for each day. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to take questions.